Hello and welcome to Friday Night Football, our last show of the season. We are handing out awards tonight and taking a look at last week's Championship Saturday. You see it there. Celebration. They crowned a new champion in the ranks of Class 6A as the La Cueva Bears dethroned the Cleveland Storm. Yeah, Van, the Storm was looking to hoist the blue trophy for a fourth consecutive time, but it was La Cueva's turn to do that as they won their first title since 2018. And well, the weather outside was frightful as snow on the turf pushed back the start of this game by 45 minutes. But while the temps were cold, the action hot as Cleveland and La Cueva, they would come out fired up in front of a packed house at Lightning Bolt Stadium. The Storm started the scoring in this one. After a solid 25-yard gain, Harris Bueha gets the rock again and finds the end zone four yards out. But to the second quarter now, where the game was now tied at seven, and yep, that's when Cam Dyer, the touchdown supplier, catches fire. Check Cam Cook. He goes 88 yards to the house, putting the Bears on top in this game. But not done yet. Cam, back for more. Is after forcing Cleveland punt. Dyer shows off the legs once again, this time going 72 yards to the house. Dyer finished with 230 yards on the ground and three total touchdowns. Yeah, and Cleveland just couldn't catch up as the Bears go on to knock off the three-time defending state champs, 35-14. to 14. Time to select a coach of the year from the ranks of Class 6A, and I think everyone has this one figured out. Brandon Back had to overcome an 0-3 start in order to get to a second consecutive championship appearance. The Class 6A state championship game. Now the Bears, they finished the season on a 10-game winning streak, resulting in the team's first state championship win since 2018. And La Cueva coach Brandon Back is in the house to receive the Friday Night Football Class 6A Coach of the Year Award. Coach, congratulations. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. You know, your reaction. On, it's just, I mean, it seems like we're always talking to you every, every other year or something like that. It feels good to be out here. You know, this is really a reflection of the kids we have, the coaches, and the community we serve. And it's just a, a great opportunity for us to try to put our best foot forward and come out on top. And that's what we were able to accomplish on Saturday. Well, speaking of a best foot forward, you, you started out 0-3. And, and, you know, this thing could have gone south. The players could have, you could have lost them. And you guys just, just like, oh, we're good. We're going to go on a 10-game win streak. Yeah, it really starts with the leadership we have on the field. Cam Dyer, Mason Posa, Nick Mertz. Uh, Jackson Hicks. There's so many of those guys who just play big pivotal roles for us and leadership roles uh, that kept everybody focused and everybody on task, and that's why we were able to be successful. Okay, Coach. Well, congratulations again on your award. Thank I'm you. going to hand this to you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. That's yours now. Thank you. Right. feel a little underdressed, but I appreciate <laughs> oh, it. No, man, you're good to go. Jared Chester standing by now for our Player of the Year in Class 6A. Jared. Thanks, Van. There were a lot of good players in Class 6A this year, but we have narrowed it down to three. Cameron Dyer, quarterback La Cueva, Elijah Brody, quarterback West Mesa, and Strat Schufelt, linebacker for the Cleveland Storm. And the winner is... Yep, Cameron Dyer is this year's Player of the Year as he racked up a total of 4,300 yards and 55 touchdowns in his junior season. With 29 TDs in the air and 26 on the ground, Dyer was the definition of a dual-threat QB. Cameron Dyer is your 6A Player of the Year. And speaking of the touchdown supplier, we have him live with us right now. Here you go. Congrats on being named Class 6A Player of the Year. What does that mean to you? I mean, you were just killer down the stretch, both in the postseason and the state championship game. I mean, it means a lot. You know, I don't get here without my teammates, um, without my coaches. You know, they put me in the best position um, that they could all year. And um, I'm just thankful. You know, I'm thankful to be here, thankful for the award. Um, and, yeah. Awesome, man. Well, it was a pleasure watching you, but we still get one more year. You're just a junior. Talk about how much fire this gives you going into now your senior season after this. I mean, I think it gives me a lot of fire, but it gives our team a lot of fire as well. You know, uh, I mean, you know, obviously the goal is back to back, um, but that hard work starts now. And that's what we are. You know, we're already talking about it as a team. You know, we got a lot of guys coming back um, and stuff like that. So I, I, I'm just ready to go again, to be honest. Um, you know, I'm going to take this nice little break, take some time off and uh, just get ready, get back to it. So it means a lot, though. Awesome. Appreciate you having on and congrats yes, once again. Thank you. That'll do it for us, man. Back to you. All right. We need to step aside and pay the bills. Much more Friday Night Football is on the way. A look back at the Class 5A title game as well as the championship in the ranks of Class 4A, and yes, more awards when we come back. The Artesia Bulldogs hoisted their second straight title in their program's 32nd all-time with a huge win over Roswell last week. Yep, that's right, Van. Let's see how it happened as Artesia would jump out in this one, tacking on a 
21 7 lead into the half after a 91 yard link up. Nia Estrada to Juan Diego Duran. Yep, let the big dog eat. Sea of Orange going wild in Artesia. The Coyotes would also show their bite, though, late in the third quarter. Zai Carrasco plays clutch as he picks off Estrada, then goes 80 yards to find pay dirt. Roswell will cut that Bulldog lead to seven. Yeah, but with back to back on their mind, the Bulldogs play closer as Estrada and Diego Duran link up for the clincher. Artesia wins again, 35 to 21 is the final. Well, the coach of the year for Class 5A is up right now. Here's a hint, he's from Titletown. Artesia Bulldogs coach Jeremy Moppin has deep roots with the team. The former Artesia quarterback returned home three years ago after turning the Los Lunas Tigers into a successful program. Since he returned to Artesia, the wins have been plenty. Moppin and the Bulldogs quickly reestablished the title town way by bringing in back-to-back -back championships. We have Jeremy Moppin here with us now, and thanks for joining us, Coach. Give us your thoughts on winning this year's award, also winning your team's second consecutive state title. Yeah, I mean, just blessed to get to coach these guys and blessed to be a part of this program. And I got, you know, great coaches that, you know, our coach Rod does a great job on the defense and just all our guys. It just means a lot to our guys and just our players, man. Uh, you know, this group of seniors really uh, have been the leaders and the catalyst and proud to, to get the win and proud to get to win another one for this community. Artesia is known for winning, and I know number 32 is huge for your program, but what does it mean for the community, especially after the recent passing of Mac Chase, who I know did a lot for Artesia? My wife coined the you know, phrase back-to-back -back for Mac, and um, I mean, Mac, Mac is Artesia. He, he's the type of guy that's made Artesia special, and what a blessing he is. And to get to participate in his celebration of life earlier this year, doing the dog pile at a funeral, like you never would think about that. And it was awesome. It was just great for our guys to be a part of it. And I saw his son this morning, and I, I told him, I said, we will never forget what Mac's done for us. You know, we're going to have something every year that celebrates his life and what he did for us here in Artesia. All right, Coach, thanks for being on, and congrats again. Now here's Jared Chester with a look at the 5A Player of the Year. Thanks, Van. Both Artesia and Roswell had players more than worthy of this year's honor. But taking a look at the nominees, we have Naya Estrada from Artesia, Manny Fuentes from Roswell, and you can't leave out Charles Lopez Burton from Valley. But your winner is... Yep, Nia Estrada takes it this year, and it's for good reason, as this senior quarterback showed up and showed out for the Bulldogs, racking up over 2,400 total yards and 29 touchdowns. Nia Estrada is your Class 5A Player of the Year. I am now joined with Nia Estrada. First off, congrats, but I mean, how are you feeling? You guys beat Roswell in dominant fashion last week, and now you earn another award for Player of the Year. Absolutely. I mean, I, I couldn't have wrote it any better, you know. Uh, obviously, an undefeated season would have been awesome, but... I mean, there's nothing better than a little comeback story. So I wouldn't do it without my O-line, my receivers, you know, staying after throwing every day. And I mean, my O-line has been great this year. I've been sacked, I think, under five times. So, I mean, it's doing it with like my guys that I've grown up with, uh, I mean, it's awesome. No better feeling. Awesome. Thanks. Nice. Solid work, Van. Back to you. All right. The Class 4A State Championship featured a newly formed rivalry between Portales and Lovington. The game played in a Portales at Greyhound Stadium, and Lovington jumped out on the Rams. Still in the first quarter, Wyatt Gomez hits Anson Marquez from 10 yards out, making it 14-0, and the Wildcats, they don't slow down after that as they go on to win 57-21. to Marks a state title number 20 for the Lovington Wildcats. Now, Lovington's Anthony Gonzalez joins us now. Coach, your team had a solid year, and you were very deserving of this year's award. Congrats on being named 4A Coach of the Year. Well, it means a lot to me to get the Coach of the Year award. I really wish that you guys would rename the award to Coaching Staff of the Year award. Um, our successes, one, come a direct reflection of our kids' efforts, and then we got a fantastic coaching staff. Caden Bailey, Josh Bailey, Josh Faith, Pecos Fort, Alex Ochoa. You know, winning the second state championship in a span of three years means a lot. I feel like we got things going in the right direction and just really, really happy we were able to bring home that 20th state championship for our kids because they deserve it. Now, Coach, talk more about that state championship win. You guys had a dominant performance. How special was it to win in that way? We have a group of 18 seniors on our football team. 
that that was their last football game. What was most rewarding to me, we played our very best football in that state championship game to see all of their hard work um, show up in the biggest game of the year. Thanks and congratulations once again, Coach. Now here's Jared with the 4A Player of the Year. Yep, thanks, Van. We have the 4A Player of the Year with us now, Wyatt Gomez of the Lovington Wildcats. Congrats on winning this award. How good does it feel to finish out your high school career on such a high note? Uh, it means a lot to me and then us seniors and everybody just because of the work we put in throughout the summer. Like We've been working this for this for a while, since last year. So I feel like we just clicked different that day, like the state championship. We knew what to do, what we had to do, and we just went out there and did it and just played our best football. All right, thanks, Wyatt Van. Back to you. All right, timeout is called Friday Night Football at the halfway mark. Awards for Class 3 are, are on the way, and Brad Benson has some New Mexico high school football history that will surprise you. The Class 3A state championship featured a battle between number two Robertson and number one St. Michael's. Yep, that's right, Van. Robertson led 10 to 7 for most of this game, but St. Mike's turns it on in the fourth quarter. You have the electricity in Ivanhead Stadium even shook the cameras. Durant plows in, giving the Horsemen their first lead of the game. Playing runner-up the last two seasons, St. Michael's wins the state trophy 21-10, marking their first state title since 2012. Now, the Class 3A Coach of the Year award was easy for us to choose this year as Joey Fernandez of the St. Michael's Horsemen was more than deserving of the honor. And our coach, grateful enough to join us in the studio and once again being mentioned as Coach of the Year, your, your reaction, we want the raw stuff, man. Well, it was, it was a, a great feeling. The kids worked hard, went through a lot of adversity this year, but the biggest thing is uh, they stuck together as a brotherhood and came through with the win. Hey, Coach, when I say we want the raw stuff, if you had just start crying and, and nobody, if, if you guys were in on the joke on me, I would have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, none of that. <laughs> yeah, none of that. Well, okay, well, this year was special because, you know, like uh, the, the way you had – Things have been in the last three championships that you've had. So, so talk about the special part of this one. Well, I think the biggest championship thing, games. I meant to say <clears throat> the biggest thing is uh, the kids. You know, going in the last two, they were kind uh -huh. of surprised going in. But when you get in the third time, you believe that you're supposed to be there. And you know, we worked hard uh, that whole uh, state championship week, and you know, it kind of showed going into the third and fourth quarter. But the fourth quarter, we've been beating right. teams uh, all season long, and I think that's. The biggest thing is we were out con more more conditioned than most of the other teams. Congratulations again. Thanks, Van. St. Appreciate Michael's it. Head co coach Joey Fernandez, Class 3A Coach of the Year for Friday Night Football, Player of the Year coming up, Jared. Yep, thanks, Van. This year's 3A Player of the Year is Socorro quarterback Isaiah Ocampo. Thanks for being on the show, man. I'll just give you this thank right you, now. Thank you. So, um, yeah, let's just talk about this. You finished with 33 total touchdowns, over 1,100 all-purpose yards. Talk about winning this award in just the year you had. I mean, I'm thankful for the award and everything. Like, I, I didn't even think that I was going to get it, to be, if I'm being honest. But I'm thankful that I do have it. And, you know, my thoughts go out to the team. Like, they're the ones that make it possible. My team and my coaches, they're the ones that make it possible. Awesome. So we see you now. Just as a junior, we still got one year, though. What, what can we expect out of Socorro and the Warriors? Success. I mean, there's no other way to put it. I'm, I have confidence in my boys and my coaches, and, you know, I'll carry them on my back, and I know that they'll have my back. Awesome. Well, thanks for being on, and congrats thank once you, again. Thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you. Van, back to you. All right, thanks, Jared. Now time to share this year's Spirit Stick champion, and it goes to the 3A state champion, St. Michael's Horsemen. Look at that. They won going away. All right, speaking of St. Michael's, coach came down by himself. Joey Fernandez, a couple of guys didn't have time to get down this time, but you're here to accept it, man. You know, usually the cheerleaders, they give us some kind of cheer. Hey, I think I was the loudest <laughs> one said, there. I think it have <laughs> it's a little more colorful than the last one, but Congratulations thank you. Thank you. There, Appreciate right there, it. Man. All right, time to talk New Mexico high school football history, sponsored by Isham Dental. Brad Benson says he mm. saved the best for last. As we finish recapping some of the history surrounding New Mexico high school football, we decided to take a deeper dive into arguably New Mexico's most historic program. We've been playing football here at Manal for well over 100 years. We've been playing football for so long that it's just part of our community, our, our, our school. In 1904, Manal School played its first ever football game. As one of Albuquerque's first football programs, Manal helped not only create the landscape of high school football, 
but also the foundation of the sport we New Mexicans know today. One of our first seasons when we beat the University of New Mexico. And so Manal played against the University of New Mexico back in the early 1900s when football was brand new. I've heard the story that one of the reasons why red is one of their colors is because red was one of our colors. And so once again, it was one of those things where everybody was poor of materials and so they shared stuff. From those early teams that beat UNM to the 1941 team that didn't allow a single point, the dominance of Manal is documented, but not to its entirety. This is they didn't really have state championships before a certain time. There's a couple other times where they were undefeated, but didn't necessarily mean that they were state champions because there wasn't really a state championship in place. But that first recorded state championship team is one that still looms large, as the impact of being a Panther in 1959 still resonates 64 years later. They were tough. <laughs> they were tough. They were mostly farm boys. They came from northern New Mexico, uh, strong and powerful. Uh, we, we didn't believe in heroes. We didn't believe in stars. We were all a team. I'm very proud of that, that everybody was really, really after each other. Manal is the only school in the city of Albuquerque to play under its own Friday Night Lights. But the history here at Tomlinson Field goes way beyond just the Panthers. Multiple teams over the years have called this place home, including Albuquerque Academy, who not only got their start here, but the Chargers red and black originated from sharing uniforms with Manal back in the 1950s. The nature of what, who we are and what we are uh, is that we, you know, as a school have always believed in the greater community and the bigger world and helping out. And that community is unlike anything you'll find across the state. Even after Manal moved down to eight-man football, the passion for the Panthers is just as high 119 years later. It's a family. It really is because, you know, generation after generation keeps supporting the team and, and coming out and supporting it and, and passing down the legacy from, uh, from group to group. My dad came, my brother came, my sister was the first homecoming queen in Manal. And that was in 1948. And it's just tradition that uh, families, generation after generation, we're proud of the school and uh, we're proud of everything that, we, that they've taught us. And that is a wrap on New Mexico high school football history presented by Isham Dental. Fan and Jared, back to you. All right, thanks, Brad. Moving on to Class 2A, the Texaco Wolverines beat the Eunice Cardinals for the state title. Yeah, Van, Eunice beat Texaco earlier in the year, but the Wolverines don't help them back this time as they go on to hoist their first state title in 15 years with a 44-7 victory. Yeah, after that performance, it's a no-brainer that Texaco head coach Bob Gilbert takes home 2A Coach of the Year. Congrats on the state title, Coach. Talk about the year your team had. I'm very humbled. Um, you know, it's very gratifying. Uh, to reach that milestone in my career at this age. Extremely proud of the whole program for what we accomplished together. For me personally, it was one of the best days of my life. Outside of my two children being born, the emotion and the exhilaration and, and the glory that we received as a community and as a team was just really overwhelming. All right, thank you again, again for Coach for being with us. All right, now to the player of the year as we are joined by Santa Rosa linebacker and fullback Nico Chavez. Nico, you had a solid senior season, racking up 34 rushing touchdowns on 2,200 yards. And on defense, you also racked up 164 tackles. Talk about winning this award and closing out your high school career strong. You know, it's great. It's a great achievement. Um, I just got to thank my teammates, my coaches, um, everything that I, all the achievements I got from offense and defense is from my teammates setting up tackles, setting up blocks, long touchdown runs. Well, Santa Rosa, it's a long tradition of football. I've been running footballs ever since I was a baby. Me and my brothers, my cousins, my uncles. It's a long tradition. Awesome. Great job, Nico. All right. Well, we need to step aside one more time. Friday Night Football heading into the final stretch. We honor eight-man and six-man football when we return. Welcome back. This year's eight-man state championship game featured top seed Melrose and Cinderella Clayton. That's right, Van, but Clayton's incredible run would be stuffed in the championship as the Buffaloes roll in a 50 to nothing victory, marking their 14th state title. And Drew Hadley of Melrose is with us now. Congrats, Coach. You have been named Friday Night Football Eight-Man Coach of the Year. Talk about that, but also your team that went 12-1 and this year. 
you know, uh, it's it's an honor uh, to get the award as, as coach of the year. But man, I, all the credits got to go back to those kids. And uh, you know, our coaching staff talked about it all season. We didn't make one tackle. We didn't make one block. And so all the credit goes back to those kids and the effort uh, that they put into the season and just the dominating performance by those kids that they that they earned um, through hard work and dedication um, and commitment. All right, good work and congrats again, coach. And sticking with Melrose, as senior wide receiver and running back Michael Cardenita joins us. How does it feel to close out your high school career a champ and also the eight-man player of the year? I really didn't think I was going to get the player of the year. Uh, so when I got that, it surprised me because there's a lot of good players on our team, like Dathan Yuri, Jackson Odom. But I'm going to have to say thanks to my whole team. Without them, I probably wouldn't have been there in that position. They pushed us to practice every day. They knew we all had one goal. And that was the one state championship. Yeah, no, awesome, solid down. work, and thanks for being on. The six-man state title game was tight between two-time defending champ Gateway Christian and Roy Mascaro, but the Longhorns would take over late in the third quarter. That's right, Van. After breaking a 30-all tie, they go on to win 46-38. to And after such a big win, Roy Mascaro's Donnie Estrada has been named the Friday Night Football Six-Man Coach of the Year. Congrats on a huge season, Coach. How gratifying is that state title? Gosh, it's it's a uh, it's this award's truly an honor, and um, I couldn't have done it with with. Uh, I've got a great coaching staff, and of course our boys, and it meant a lot. We were the underdogs. David and Goliath going into the Gateway game, nobody expected us to beat them, but everybody in the locker room knew that we had a heck of a shot to beat them, and we had faith in ourselves and and our system, and um, we got it done. That's what it takes. Congrats, coach. Great job this season. Now to the player of the year, and that goes to Longhorn wide receiver, Jackson Fudge. Man, you had a solid junior season racking up over 30 touchdowns, but just talk about closing out that victory over Gateway Christian. Well, it's always been a dream of mine to make it to the state championship, and I always thought that being the smallest school in New Mexico would be a big stretch to do it. Well, we knew our coach had always told us you keep hitting the other team and sooner or later they'll start to fold and we just kept hitting them and kept hitting them and so that's just what we did and we ended up pulling it out in the end. Awesome. Congrats, young man. All right. I can't believe what I'm about to say. That'll do it. Friday night football, the season. It's done. It's done. High school football is everything? Yep. <laughs> we'll see you next season. Thanks for joining us for this great ride.